All right, so uh, for today's video, we're going to be going over how to set up some real-time data syncing between clients, uh, and in this case, how to sync a score system um, between clients. If we just refer back to um, the idea of model view controller. It's the architecture that Norman Core follows and, and how this is going to be applied into what we're doing today. We're going to be setting up a model, and this is not to be confused with a 3D model. Basically, the model will be a script that we create in Unity. Uh, that is basically, that is what information is stored within the data store of Norman Core. The view that we'll be creating will be, um, it's already created in our uh, game, but it's going to be the UI element, the text element, or in this case, like the game object. So that's what is viewed uh, by the clients. And then we'll be creating a controller, uh, which is another script, which basically tracks the changes that are made. And then as you can see from this diagram, uh, updates both the model in the data store and updates the visual uh, representation in the game object, in this case, the uh, UI element. So we're going to go ahead and jump into Unity here. And we're going to create a new script, and I'm going to put it inside my scripts folder. And we're just going to go ahead and call this player, player data model. Let's go inside and edit that script. All right, so as this will be a very specific function that's used within the data store of Normcore, we don't need any of these methods that are defaults. And we're going to start by adding in another library, which will allow us to access some of the methods we need for um, the model. So we'll be normal dot real time dot synchronization or serialization, sorry. And just above this class here, we're going to add in um, a definer, which will define this as the, the real-time model. And as this is, um, the script that we're writing is specific to the Normcore uh, functionality, we don't want this to be inherited from the model behavior. If we hover over this, we can see that model behavior is the base class from which every script uh, in Unity is derived. Now, we don't want to inherit any of those um, kind of methods or class. So we're going to actually remove this. And then within here, we're going to create um, the one property. Now, if you were wanting to have a player that had track of health and score and your username and all a variety of data, you could add more. But for the for simplicity of the prototype you need to create, we're going to just create the uh, a score value. So we'll go ahead and create uh, private and integer since we're dealing with score. And we're going to create a variable name. Now, when you're working with variable names within norm core, they need to start with an underline. So not quite there. Uh, we need to actually define that this variable that we've created is part of the uh, norm core system. So we're going to add another definer um, above like we did with the real-time model. This time we're going to go oops, real-time property. And this is a, we're going to put a bracket here because there's a couple of prop or parameters that we're going to be passing through to this. And if we just take a look at the IntelliSense here, we can see there's three options here. Uh, the first one is a basically an integer, a property ID. So if you were to have multiple properties attached to this player, uh, like I said, score, health, username, each one of those would be a different property ID starting with one. Uh, then the next is a Boolean. It's either reliable or not reliable. So if we just take a quick look at the Normcore documentation, there's a bit of a description as to what's happening here with reliable or unreliable. So a reliable real-time property basically is something that you would set to be reliable if it changes a lot, meaning a, like a color or you're moving, like you can see in these examples. And the reason why you're saying setting it as reliable is if the, there is data dropped in the syncing, uh, it's not going to resend it because it, it will assume that the data will be changing quickly again, and so it saves some bandwidth. Uh, where you might want it set to reliable is uh, if it's like a, like a game start or a status within the game that doesn't change a lot. That way, if you set to reliable, if the data is dropped in packet transfer, uh, it will get resent again because it's not it's not assuming that it's going to be updated frequently. Uh, so. 
with a score, it's up to you if you want to set it to reliable or unreliable uh, because it will change, but it might not change enough. Uh, so you might want to leave it as um, unreliable so that it will get updated. So we're going to leave it as unreliable for now. And then if we just go back here, uh, the last one is uh, there's another property, it's another Boolean, um, create did change event. So if we set that to true, what's going to happen is when this value changes, it will trigger an event. That event we can use to listen to to basically update um, aspects like the DUI display that's going to be in the game. So we're going to want to have that set to true. So we're going to have one, true, true. Just to recap, this is the ID. If we had more than one property, we'd have one, two, three, et cetera. This value of true is basically saying that it's going to be using the, the reliable so that it will... Um, so I'll just double check here. Right. Um, so it will it'll resend um, if there's a packet loss. And then this last boolean is basically indicating that if this property does change, it will trigger an event, and we can use that event later on uh, to listen for it to, to update our UI. Let's go ahead and hit save. That's all we need to put into this model script here. If we jump back into Unity and just give it a second to compile. Uh, we can see here when, with the script selected, there's this compile model uh, script or button and this clear auto-generated model. So if we go ahead and click compile model and we jump back into Visual Studio. It's going to prompt us to say there's been some changes. If we hit yes, we could see all the auto-generated code that was created by Normcore. Now, if you wanted to, if you went ahead and created this model with the with one parameter, in this case score, but later on you're like, oh, well, I need to add health, what you can do is rather than going and change adding this in manually health, because you can see there's a lot of places where the parameter is being referenced, rather than doing that, what we'll do is go back into Unity, clear the auto-generated model. We can see it's up updated. It's wiped all out, gone back to what we had from before. We can then add in a new property if we want to add in health or username, hit save, and then go back and compile the model, and it will create a new code that references the additional parameter that you added or the additional property. So that's all that we're going to do for this video. It's going to be breaking them up so it's a little bit more to, uh, a little bit less to digest at once. Our next video, we'll take a look at creating the real-time property, or sorry, the um, real-time component, which is the listener or the action item for updating the score. And then uh, we'll move on past that. So the next video, we'll take a look at the real-time component piece.